yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I, I, I imagine it, it, it's always a big moment. And that, that first role you land. I mean, sort of to, to bring us more up to speed, because obviously I want to talk to you about um, Angela Black. But before we get to that, I mean, I, I think it's it's fair to say one of the roles that uh, you're very well known for was because it was um, a phenomenal series. But it was also a, a, a role within that series that I, I think audiences really fell in love with. Uh, so I'm obviously talking about Downton Abbey. But I, I do think, Anna, your character... Um, was something of a breakout star from that series in so much as people really loved her and her story. Oh, thank you. Um, I loved playing her. I think, um, I think what was special about Anna was her relationship with Mr. Bates, as in, I think it was Anna and Bates together yeah. that people fell in love with. And me and Brendan were so pleasantly surprised by how much people got in, got on board with their relationship from from the off because it was very much when the series first started it was very much the sort of Mary and Matthew upstairs and sort of Anna and Bates downstairs so we f felt we were the sort of less glamorous sort of couple um you know downstairs because we're we're playing the servants um so we didn't expect people to sort of get on board with their um sort of you know with with their relationship and their their trials and tribulations as much as as they did but I think I think people really connected with um, Anna and Bates's relationship as this sort of slow burn. Both both characters had such strong moral codes and such strong values, and in that way, that's actually you know quite a rare thing, as we all know. And so, in that way, they were just so perfect for each other, and they came across so many um, obstacles that needed to be overcome. I think, you know. The audiences just kept rooting for them and it was sort of their love grew from this real respect for each other and this sort of friendship and you know they couldn't be together and then you're like please be together and so it was it was it was just wonderful to see how people got behind them and and Anna was a character as well and obviously everything that she went through and when I first got the role I um I love I mean I just loved Anna and I really wanted to play her and at that point it was a character the sort of character that I'd not really played before because she was just kind of you know a really good person and really lovely and the kind of person you would want as a best friend you know you, that she'd be so loyal and she'd always have your back and so I wanted to find like a real strength to her as well because I because actually I think it does take a real strength to be able to um be that kind of person I think in some ways you have to be a much stronger person than if you're going to follow the crowd or you know or kind of you know maybe not have such a strict moral code so I didn't want her to be this sort of saccharine sweet wish you or she person I wanted her to have like a strength of character so um so I was so pleased when when people connected with her because I I yeah I, I I kind of fell in love with her a little bit she's definitely someone I'd have as a friend <laughs> and, and do correct me if I'm wrong but I, three Emmy nominations and, and one uh, Golden Globe win uh, for uh, your performance uh, as Anna. That's that's kind of a, a, a big deal. Um, how much of a big deal was it for you? Is it just is it just window dressing or is it actually like fucking hell? I've won a Golden Globe. Um, it was a huge deal. It was an absolutely huge deal. I just I yeah, I mean. And it's it's bizarre because, as I say, it's not something you think about on a day to day basis. Like not, none of us do, do we? We don't sit here and think about our achievements or the things we've done wrong in life. You just kind of hopefully looking at today and tomorrow and moving forward. Um, but whenever I sort of stop to talk about it, was, um, it does bring back all those emotions of just kind of wow. I remember the first year that Downton was nominated at the Emmys and um, Michelle Dockery and myself went over for the week and we sort of cadged the extra tickets and we went as the producer and the director's plus ones. <laughs> and because we kind of like planned it between us, we were like, should we go to Michelle's auntie? And Aunt, Aunt Trish, I'll give her a name check, lives in LA. And um, she said, we can stay with Aunt Trish, let's go. And I was like, I was, gonna, I was like, let's do it. So we flew ourselves over, we did our own hair and makeup and stuff. We got hair and makeup for the actual big Emmy event, but all the pre-parties, we borrowed clothes, we switched clothes with each other, we just totally went for it. And I remember us, and we had an absolute blast, like going to all these 
uh, kind of events that we we just we hadn't had any of those kind of experiences before those big American award shows. And um, I remember us both sitting there in the audience really far back with our team and um, lovely Elizabeth McGovern was nominated uh, for, for performance that, that first year. So she was down the front. And I remember me and Michelle looking at each other and me saying, oh my goodness, imagine what Elizabeth must be feeling right now. She must have her heart in her mouth. How amazing would that be to be <laughs> personally nominated by heart? And then cut to the following year, me and Michelle both have personal nominations as well. And so we just, we just couldn't believe our luck, you know, and, and that, but nothing, we always say nothing will quite match that first experience when we were there, sort of not feel, not quite feeling like we had the, like we should be yet, you know, um, and then being able to go back the following year and just be like, wow, we're, we're here again, but this time it's official, you know, um, and it was, it, they were, they were magical times. They really were, they were magical experiences. And I think it happened at a time in my life and a time in my career where I'd been working for 12 years before I did Downton. And I was really glad it came when it did, because I was at um, a mindset about things where I thought, wow, I must, I must make sure I enjoy these moments. I must make the most of them. Like I must take all this in and, and, and yeah, just, just enjoy it because it may never happen again. And what an incredible experience to have in your life. Um, and the actual Golden Globe win was just, I mean, it was just, it was just a fairy tale. I still, when I talk about it, I still just remember this hit of kind of adrenaline of, um, <laughs> And they sort of say my name and I'm clapping away thinking they said someone else's name. And then it sort of dawns on me that it was my name. And I, I just was just, I mean, for once in my life, I was lost the words. And um, yeah, I just thought I've got to go to the stage. I've got to go to the stage. Uh, that, and, and that was it. And then I came off stage and I was just, it was possibly the most surreal moment of my life, but one of the most magical. And yeah, it was just a fairy tale. Do, do, do you because I, 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 I've, I've covered both the Globes and, and the Oscars for, for Sky over the years. And, and I, I just always wonder what what are you seeing the crowd? Are the lights too bright? Can you see faces of people who you like grew up watching you? And there you are. And I'm on stage. And uh, or is it, is it kind of just like a blur? No, you can see everyone. <laughs> so you walk past. And also where we work is the because um, the TV um sort of awards tables are always further back than the movie ones because obviously like you've got your a-list of movie stars at the front and the, you know they're sort of more on camera for the ceremony so you have to you know from from our table from the dance table I had to walk through it, like it was it, it felt like it took me 10 years to get to the stage and I'm walking past like everybody I've ever seen in every movie just thinking this isn't happening this, this is happening this is actually happening and you have to stand up there and you have to speak hopefully eloquently and and yeah no it's it's not like being in the theater where you know the audience are in darkness you can see everybody everybody and it is the most surreal it was the most surreal and wonderful experience and you know what everyone was so kind and um lovely and encouraging and you know met lots of people before and afterwards who were just so yeah just just so encouraging and, and friendly and made it a really it felt like a really warm room to be in I did I do have to say because it, it, it was it was already a was it already a success in the states at that point it, it sort of landed big in, in, in the US. Yeah, yeah. By that point, it was sort of a fully yeah we were a fully fledged success in the US by season four. Yeah. And when it came to an end, and you sort of look back along that journey, I, well, I guess did you know when when the series ended, when the sixth series came to an end, um, were you aware at that point that there was the there was the potential for a movie or had it been like, or did you think this is, this is it. I'm saying goodbye to, uh, to this, this huge part of my life. We did know that they, um, they being the producers and Julian Fellows, our writer, um, we did know that, that they wanted to, they hoped that a movie could happen. Um, excuse me, taking a drink of water. Um, but we weren't, we weren't sure you never are in this business you don't know what's happening from one minute to the next so um but we knew there was there was the um the intention of that which was which was great and i think everybody was um absolutely on board for that i think the show 
as a series, I think we finished at the right time. I feel like, you know, we left on a high still, um, which is where you want to be. You don't want to sort of keep going and going and going until it sort of loses all, all its quality. So I think it was sort of a perfect choice, really. Um, and um, yeah, so we had that, you know, two or three years in between finishing filming the series and, and starting to shoot the first movie. And um, and again, who could have known the first movie would have been such a success? I mean, obviously, we, you know, we knew that the audience would be fans of the show. So mm. there's a there's a, a big, you know, there's a big fan base and that, that should be great. But um, I mean, the movie surpassed everybody's expectations that because it's it's that thing of like, well, people love watching it when it's on TV, but are they going to yeah. bother to leave their homes and get in a car and go to the cinema and pay for their ticket and and do all of that? And my, my goodness, they did in their droves. So that was so um, incredible. I just was like, wow, what a what a joy that was to to sort of um, be a part of that as well. It's sort of one of the most one of the biggest movies of the year and the biggest yep. movie focus features that's ever produced and <laughs> all the biggest box office in terms of revenue and yeah I mean we were just like wow it's you know they've, they've it's, managed to do it again <laughs> it's I mean it's it's wonderful to see something that you know is a, a staple of a uh, of uh, Sunday night drama uh, and then well it was pushing 200 million pounds at the at the the box office something something incredible like that yeah, yeah, it was. It was just over two hundred million, I think, at the box office, which is it's crazy, isn't it? It's yeah. crazy, but fantastic. But it, Thank you, everyone that yes. wants to see it. <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, enough to uh, enough um, uh, success. I mean, I, I'm sure when, when you, you when uh, the, the 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 accountants are counting the 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 dollars that have rolled in, they're already going. So uh, the sequel, and sure enough, um, we we are getting a sequel. Um, the the new era downtown abbey the new era am i am i right in thinking that that's what uh, that's what i think it's called um out next year are you, have you finished shooting it i don't want to pressure you into saying something and having uh, old fellows on the phone going what have you said but um sure. but i would love to know where you are with it yes we have uh we've finished shooting it's going to be out in march time i think um Obviously, I can't tell you anything about it, yeah. um, but there is wondering what I can say without saying giving too much away and getting into trouble. There is a, another. There is a visit to the house, which causes a lot of um, a lot of excitement, I would say, mm -hmm. and some un, and some unsettlement. And there is a a trip abroad. Dot dot dot. Watch this space. <laughs> That's all I'll I can do, say. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do me. No, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm a fan. I mean, I, re I remember it was Julian Fellows and his writing that actually got me into period dramas because, I, you know, I'm a bit, I was a bit sniffy about it because, you know, I grew up watching sci-fi and horror and I'm like, oh, period dramas. And then I, it was, it was uh, his, um, it was actually the script he won the Oscar for, Gosford Park, the, the Robert Altman movie that I ended right. up watching and going, and going, okay, this is a, this is a period drama and, and I'm in, I'm into it in a big way. Yeah, it's such a fantastic movie. And that's where, you know, I'm sure it's obvious, but that's where Downton came from. Gareth Neem, our exec producer, um, approached Julian and said, what do you feel about doing Gosford Park for television, basically? And mm. he, I think Julian was like, oh, not really thought about that. And and that's that's literally how Downton was born. So... Well, that makes that makes sense. I, 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 I'm a fan of both. But let's talk now um, about uh, uh, your new series. Hello, Alex here. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get in touch with us at all for any reason, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at JTF pod. And don't forget to subscribe to the full audio podcast on Apple, Spotify or wherever you get your pods.